Hello there, my fellow Battle Brothers, and welcome to a brand new edition to my series about Space Marine Chapters. Now, first and foremost, I would like to begin by wishing all of you a Happy New Year and best wishes in all departments. Since I also did a more obscure chapter for Christmas, I thought it was fairly fitting to end the year with another lore episode from this playlist. In today's video, we are going to be talking about a Space Marine Force called the Aurora Chapter. Now, since their very name has the word chapter in it, I will do my best to avoid saying it twice every time. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about them. In the last day of the year, no less. Shall we? The Aurora Chapter is a Loyalist chapter of Space Marines that is a second founding successor chapter of the Ultramarines. There's actually a bit of a controversy regarding their founding date. While some claim the Aurora to be one of the Ultramarines' second founding chapters, others place the date of their founding much later. It's not that relevant, but an interesting bit of trivia in my opinion. Masters of Lightning Fast Armored Assault, the Aurora Chapter possesses a sizable armory. Its vehicles are manufactured on its homeworld of Firestorm, a planet covered with industrial macro complexes potent enough to rival even a forge world in scale. Their name has become a byword for armored assault across the Ultima Segmentum of the Imperium that serves as its primary area of operations. The origins of the Aurora Chapter can be traced back to the Great Crusade over 10 millennia earlier, when it was still part of the Ultramarines Legion, then known as the 13th before their reunification with their Primarch Roboot Gilliman. Following their unification with the Primarch, Gilliman quickly set about to restructuring the Legion's operational doctrine and hierarchy to suit his personal taste and style of leadership. While the newly birthed doctrine of structured adaptability became deeply ingrained within many of the Legion's chapters, there were some notable deviations from this pattern. Some few individual chapters, through long-held preference or some quirk of supply, maintained significant strengths of non-standard equipment and personnel. One of the more noteworthy examples of this was the fourth chapter, known within the Legion as the Aurorans. These guys operated roughly five times as many armored vehicles as a standard chapter. Before their unification with the Primarch, the Warrior Brotherhood of the 13th had, at the time, began to display its achievements visually. But rather than take on a particular livery and iconography as a whole, individual companies who had come to prominence in a particularly important compliance operation or campaign took on additions to their core Legion livery. This maintained the post-unification Storm Grey and Gun Metal they had worn since Sedna, to commemorate their greatest achievement. The principally armored formations of the 13th Legion helped halt an orc advance on the Ash Plains of Cypra Mundi, and in doing that, they saved the city of millions from savage death. Afterwards, they commemorated the battle by mirroring on their left pauldron the emerald light of the blazing Aurora Borealis that had riven the skies under which they had fought. Such honors were claimed as the Legion's might made visible. When the second founding of the Space Marines was decreed, seven years after the death of Horus and the end of his heresy, most of the old Loyalist Legions divided into relatively few chapters. But the Ultramarines were divided many times. The existing armored formations of the Ultramarines' fourth chapter became part of the newly founded Aurora chapter. Since that bygone era, the Aurora chapter has always been known as the undisputed masters of armored assault. They boast more land raiders and predators than many other Space Marine chapters. Ever since their creation in the second founding, they have preferred massed spearheads led by heavily armored main battle tanks, earning them renown throughout the Ultima Segmentum. 
countless millions of indentured servants work in the Munitorums night and day to feed the mighty guns of the Aurora Chapter's tank companies, ensuring that their weapons would never fall silent. A few notable campaigns they took part in include the armored assault on Grylos. The massed armored spearheads of the Aurora Chapter broke the orc invasion of Grylos. The Goru Heresy When a chaos-inspired Nihilo cult usurped power in the Goru system, the Aurora Chapter executed a lightning campaign that decapitated the heretics' inner circle and restored order in the region within ten days of their deployment. There was scant cause for celebration, however, as the chapter master of the time, Lord Herak Nusson, was killed when the heretic leader unleashed a warp-fueled Psy Vortex as a dying act of spite. The Redemption Rebellion In the second half of the 41st millennium, after joining forces to defeat the Alpha Legion warband responsible for the Redemption Rebellion, the Aurora Chapter and the Knights of the Raven Chapter swore a bitter feud against each other, each blaming the other for their grievous losses. The conflict was only ended by the intervention of the Ultramarines Chapter Master, Marnius Kalgar. The Zeist Campaign the Aurora Chapter heeded the call of the Ultramarines Lord of Macrag, Marnius Kalgar, in the eastern fringes of the galaxy to take part in the Zeist campaign against the Tau Empire. The Aurora Chapter provided armored support in the form of predators to help spearhead the assault on the Tau-occupied world of Augura. This world served as a staging area for the Tau forces during their so-called Third Sphere expansion campaign into Imperial space but due to the overwhelming force provided by a combined task force of 12 Space Marine chapters, the Tau were forced to withdraw to protect more secure territory within their own borders. Unfortunately, though the Space Marines had won the war and stopped the Tau's expansion, it was not possible to sanction a retaliatory thrust into Tau-held space, as the individual Space Marine forces were required elsewhere in the galaxy. The Reconquest of the Forsar Sector Three standard years after the fall of the Sector's vital hive world capital of Forsar in the Segmentum Tempestus, the Administratum finally recognized the real threat posed by the Orc War Garagak. The Aurora Chapter joined a powerful coalition with their brethren of the Revilers and the Death Eagles, as well as a demi legion of Titans of the Legio Astroman and several regiments of Imperial Guard and Ecclesiarchy forces. They took the fight to the Orcs, and reclaimed the Forsar Sector for the Emperor. It is unknown if the fact that the Raven Guard homeworld of Deliverance is also located in the Forsar Sector prompted this deployment. One of the most important relics of the chapter is a weapon called Remembrance. Remembrance is a mastercrafted Astartes Thunderhammer, Though the members of the Death Watch are sworn to set aside their ties to their chapter during the service in the Long Vigil, they remain Space Marines, forever battle brothers of the Adeptus Astartes. When the Aurora chapter lost a task force in the Jericho Reach to unknown Zeno's foes, it was the Death Watch who rescued the survivors and returned the Gene Seed of the Fallen. Among the losses was a venerable Land Raider tank, ruined beyond repair. The Forge Master of Watch Fortress Ariok at the time took it upon himself to forge its main axle anew as a mighty thunder hammer, so that the machine could avenge its destruction. Those who have wielded the weapon in battle swear it strikes with the force of a tank bearing down upon its foe. The Death Watch, in case you don't know, is the militant arm of the Ordo Zenos faction of the Inquisition. The Aurora Chapter's power armor is painted forest green. The Aquila or Imperialis on the chest guard is gold. A white squad specialty symbol, Tactical, Assault, Devastator or Veteran, is indicated on the right shoulder pauldron. A black Roman numeral, designating squad number, is stenciled in black in the center. 
The color of the shoulder pauldron trim designates company number as prescribed by the Codex Astartes. If promoted to sergeant, a battle brother displays a red skull on his helm. The Aurora chapter's badge is a black, lowercase, Greek letter alpha turned on its right side. This is placed inside the white, 12-pointed star centered on a field of green. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Aurora chapter of the Adeptus Astartes. Would you like to be a battle brother in this chapter? Why would you favor them? Let me know in the comments below. And for the final time in 2017, I once again wish you a happy new year and a great time if you celebrate via a party with friends or loved ones. Best wishes from me, the Grimdark Narrator, and the Emperor as well, hopefully. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.